welcome back to the Goose and Ghost Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you today from Seattle on a beautiful but very cold Saturday where I just got off work a little bit ago and I'm ready to sit down and talk about some knitting. So um, I talked about a little bit in my last episode about how I have moved from full-time start moved to full-time at work so um, my knitting time has decreased greatly that has decreased greatly so this is probably gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode I don't have a lot to talk about today I don't have a lot to show you today so we're just gonna kind of got to roll with it and um, hopefully in the next episode I'll have a lot more to show you. So we'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, I am wearing a knit cardigan, but it is commercially made. I think I bought it at TJ Maxx a long time ago before I started knitting. It's just color blocked. I wear it all the time. It's just a cozy throw over piece. And, but my hat I did make. This is the Holiday Doodle hat. I do have a pom pom on it but it's just hidden from being the same color as the wall. Holiday Doodle Hat by uh, PNW Knit Design or Pacific Knit Co. or Jamie Lomax, who I am a huge fan of. I'll tilt down so you can see the hat. I'm not taking it off because my hair is a disaster right now. Um, so it's a super, super fun pattern. You pick and choose there's like 30 something charts that you can pick and choose from to uh, put together in any order that you want to make this doodle hat. And she has a cowl pattern too. She also has an autumn doodle hat and cowl actually. I'll go grab my uh, cowl real quick. It is my favorite cowl to wear right now. It is so cozy, so cute. And it was sitting right there because I've been wearing it to work. So, on one side, you just have this little, cute little pattern. On the other side, I have all of my doodles. So I've got some candy corn, some more coffee cups, some leaves, more leaves, jack-o'-lanterns, of course, some acorns and leaves, and then we're back to here. So. I love this. I love both of these. I made these both last year. It's so cute. I love like the scrappy kind of nature of it. It's very like, it, it's not traditional fair aisle designs, but because of how it's pick and choose your patterns, it feels like traditional fair aisle. So this one, I obviously had a whole palette of colors and this one I just used two. And I love both of them so much. So I'll probably end up making another holiday doodle something this year because it's it's such a good staple. Um, it's so great. So let's get on to what I have made in the last two weeks since I had my last episode. Um, I have two FOs, only one of which I can share with you. The first FO that I can't show you um, until December 24th is my sock pattern that will be coming out in collaboration with Yarnaceous Fibers for her Christmas Eve cast on box. And last that I talked to Maggie, there was only seven boxes left and that was a couple days ago. So I don't know how many boxes are left. If you want one, you better go check it out. I will of course have it linked down below in the description of this video. Um, in the box you get the pattern made, designed by me and that is what I finished this week is my, my full sample of, of the pattern. The, the pattern designed by me, a stitch marker designed by Sam's Tiny Trinkets, a full 100 gram skein of uh, Salta fingering sock yarn from Maggie who is urinaceous and two 20 gram mini skeins. And I'll, yeah, 
why not? I'll share a little bit about the pattern. It does use all three skeins of yarn. It is Christmas inspired. I was inspired by elves um, and all of the fun, cute little imagery that comes with elves. And it is an all over texture with a tiny, tiny bit of color work. So I designed it in a way where you get your little bit of interest when you cast on, but it's easily memorizable for all of the holiday knitting that you may do on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing Day, whatever else you may have during the season. So I designed it so that you can have your little bit of fun, but it is easy to continue working on while you're busy throughout those couple days. So highly recommend checking that out, not just because I'm biased, maybe I'm a little bit biased, I still think you should check it out. So link is down below, go check it out. May he is an incredible dyer um, and a really good friend. So great, fantastic. Second FO, not knitting. Um, I said in my last episode that I'm going to start sewing some real patterns and I sewed one pattern this week. Um, I sewed a skirt. This is the pattern that I used. It is McCall's M8259. It's a skirt and it comes with four views. I did four view, view D. And like normal, nothing is going to focus. It's just a wrap skirt. It's not overly complicated or anything like super special to write home about. It is a wrap skirt. And I will of course insert some B-roll here because um, I'm going to hold it up and you're not going to be able to see it because it's long. But I really enjoyed making and I just used this emerald or foresty olivey kind of dark olivey color. It's a hundred percent polyester. Nothing special that you can really see, but I do feel very cute in it. Why is it a little weird? I'm gonna have to fix something with that. Mm -hmm, I love that. So, um, yeah, you can see here how great I am with seams. And then I, I was very proud of myself. Where is it? I sewed a buttonhole for the first time too. So that um, the wrap can go through it. Um, and it was super fun. It was really hard to learn how to read patterns. I learned kind of quickly and through talking to my mom that sewing patterns are kind of ridiculous, dare I say bullshit, um, but they don't really explain a lot. And this is a, McCall's calls it a level one learn to sew pattern. So it is supposed to be very easy. I didn't think that it was super easy. There was definitely some times where I was like, I don't understand what you were asking me to do. So I definitely made some things up. And it turned out fine. Like the whole waistband, completely improvised. It's not supposed to look like how it is, but um, like you can see that I have it double folded. And this just looks like cute little extra detail, right? It's not supposed to be like that, but it is like that. So I'm gonna call it a cute little extra detail. So. I'm gonna wear this often. I actually wore it out the other night. Um, we had an event for Colin's work and I wore it with combat boots and a black turtleneck and I felt really cute. I felt really cute. I'm planning on wearing it for Thanksgiving. I'm definitely gonna have to take some pictures because I think I'm gonna wear it with either my Haven sweater or my souffle. I haven't decided yet, but they're both uh, dark warm brown and I think it would look super pretty and I'll probably decide the day of which one to wear but I do I, I think it'll look so good with so many of my pieces in my wardrobe and I think it'll be a good addition so 
that's all I've got for Epos. Really great to kind of share. Um, I'm just gonna keep, I have to check my time because uh, I have an important call uh, at in 40 minutes that I have to take. So I have to keep checking to make sure what time it is, but I think I'll be good for time. I don't think I'm gonna be recording that long today. I'm already through FOs and it's only been 10 minutes. And for whips, I only have three whips. And one I cast on half an hour ago. So there's not much to show you there. But let's talk, and we'll start with the FO, the whip that you've seen. This is my Christmas stocking. And we're planning on setting up all of our Christmas stuff, our decorations, hopefully tonight uh, after dinner. So next episode, I will pull out Colin's stocking to show you with mine. But so his his is matching mine. Um, his I don't remember what pattern it. It has the truck on it, and it's by Ursula Almeida as well. Mine is the vintage toys pattern by Ursula Almeida. This is where I'm at. So we'll move it around here so that you can see. Oh, maybe not. I'm in the middle of a row, so I can't really maneuver it so you can see the whole. Oh, I keep dropping stitches. I can't maneuver it so that you can see the one whole chart. But I've got the presents done and the ribbon and now I'm on to the rocking horse. You can kind of see like his mane's here. Starting to starting to progress, starting to be there. Um, I want to work on this some more. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of sad that I've only done this much of it. I really want to keep working on it. So I'm using um, Knit Picks palette in the color Grass, Garnet Heather, and I have to start on a new ball of almond. So I did manage to get through, um, I bought all of the same skeins for both mine and Colin's uh, stockings, and um, I bought one skein of the green, and there's this Here's a fresh new skein, so you can see size difference. This is how much I have of the green still. Lots left. And I bought two each of the red and the, the almond. The garnet and the almond, almond. And this is what I have left of the first one for the garnet. And I have this much left for the first skein of almond. So you can get through a decent amount of yarn. Um, get through a decent amount before you need to to get a new skein. So this is my color palette. I love it. I think it feels like vintagey, you know, because it's it's vintage toys. Um, I was actually a little bit disappointed when I had the yarn come in originally because. I didn't think this was gonna be so dark, and I didn't think that this was gonna be so bright. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a darker red. But I think all together, these do work really well. I just wanted the, the almond color to be a little bit lighter, so it's more of like a creamy off-white than pure stark white. Um, but I still, I do really like how these are all looking together. And I think this will last so well and like we're nowhere near this but when the time comes where we need to where we get to expand our family and I think that this will be a pattern that I can keep adding to I can make I mean Ursula Almeida has I think there's like seven eight or nine there's a lot of different stocking patterns um, I, I can make one for our future children and it'll all be cohesive and they'll all match and I think that's so cute I think that's so sweet 
Um, but also, my friend Mary is coming out with a dinosaur stocking, I think, on the 25th. In, also in collaboration with Urinaceous Fibers. I don't know, I don't have a purpose to make a dinosaur stocking, but I want to, so maybe, 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 who knows, I don't know. So that's, I'm really hoping by the next episode that I can have a good chunk of that done to the heel. Let's say by, no, by the next episode, be through, be the first week of December. By the next episode, I want it almost done or done. Let's say that. Let's say that. But first, I have to finish the next whip because I actually need to wear these because it's so cold. It's been really cold and um, all my, my fingers get cold. I need mittens. I've never made myself a pair of mittens before. So this is in a me made bag with Star Wars on it. And this bag actually, like it holds a decent amount. It's got my little Animal Crossing pouch in it. A skein of yarn, a finished mitten, and my, my just barely started mitten. So, go me. This is, I'll put it on so I can show you. This is um, Tin Cans Knits World's Simplest Mitts Modified. So I really enjoy watching Caleb with from Drowning with Yarn. And a while back he came out with uh, the modification he uses to make these. Where, so here is my first one. Great. I used Sorella's Classic DK in the color Haunted Mansion. I'm not a pur purple person, but I am a Haunted Mansion person. You know me. I love my Haunted Mansion. So, here's my first one done. But, not just any of them. Any simple, world simplest bits. Kabam! So it is convertible. Um, the thumb stays that way, which is probably for the best because I'm in cold fingers. So um, it just has a little flap. And I will link the, the knitting pattern is free. And it's for fingering DK and worsted weight yarn. And it's bulky too. Fingering, worsted, fingering DK worsted and bulky weight yarn. Fantastic. And it's free. Tin Can Knits is really... They really are those girls. They do the most, they come out with the best patterns, and then they make these amazing patterns for free. So Caleb shared that um, his modification, he has a YouTube tutorial for it as well, and it's also free. So I will have both of the pattern and the modification tutorial linked down below. And I'm loving these. They're so fast. I cast these on Wednesday night. We had to go after I got off of work. Um, Colin had a client that we had to go drop off some product to, and it was a four hour round trip. So two hours to them and two hours back. And we had to take a ferry, which not all that uncommon around here, but fairy rides are still fun. So I had to sit down, I had to come to bring a project with me that would be easy to work on in the car in the dark um, and didn't take that much focus. So I, I brought, started this on that drive. Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Wednesday night. It's now Saturday and I didn't work on this that much. We had Wednesday night we took these out. Thursday night, we had that event that I wore the skirt to. Friday, I think Friday was the day that I worked on this most. And today, I just did like this much of the thumb from here up. Okay. 
And then I started the, the second one. Not a whole lot of progress in the second one, but like I said, these go so quick that I'm not really that worried about it. I just have the, the little babyest amount of the cuff done. And then here's the yarn. Super pretty. It's actually like, I don't like purple. I've told you guys this before. I don't like purple. I love these. I think these are so cute. And I'm very excited to have them. And I think I need to have a pair of gloves. I need to make myself a pair of gloves, I think. So, very proud of these. I really like these. And I've got one last work in progress that I started, like I said, quite literally, half an hour ago. So we'll start with the yarn. It looks like this. It is a zebra yarn. You can see the little barber pulling in there. This is from a local to me yarn dyer. Um, it is Serial Knitters Underground Dye House, who it, you, she used to be an LYS. She used to have a, a storefront, but um, I think just before COVID, she decided that she wanted to do yarn dyeing full time instead of um, being a shop owner, which is good for her. Um, and she's doing really well with it. So this is her Wild Skug base. And S Skug, S-K-U-G, is all capitalized. So I feel like it's an acronym for something. But I have no clue. Um, and then it's in the color Mystic Blue. It is 437 yards per 100 grams fingering weight. Ethically sourced 100% superwash merino. And I have finally jumped on the Muscleboro train. And this is as far as I've gotten. Just the very beginning. I am doing it on Magic Loop. I hate double pointed needle needles so much. So I'm I'm just doing Magic Loop. It's not that big of a deal to me. Um, and I'm I am doing this on a US three, which I don't know what millimeter that is. Um, I have two sets of interchangeable needles. I have a very nice pair of chow goos, which were actually, speaking of drowning in yarn, we'll, we'll go back to Caleb for a second. A couple years ago, he had a um, make-along where you learn a new skill, teach yourself a new skill while knitting hats. And I think I knit three hats for that make along. It was when I was I was newer to knitting, so I had a lot of skills that I could learn. And I actually won um, a full chow goo interchangeable set from that make along. And I am eternally grateful for that because I would not have been able to afford them otherwise. Uh, and they are fantastic. So I have a chow goo set and a very cheap set that I bought on Amazon when I was just starting to knit because I needed needles and I didn't know better. And now that I'm experienced in the world and know things, I'm not enjoying these. So I have both of my stocking and the muscle burrow. I'm knitting on US 3, uh, which is a 3.25 millimeter. And I have I haven't knit with my cheap I'll call them big air needles starter needles. Um, it is an interchangeable set. I haven't knit with these in a year and a half at least. I knit everything with my child goose now, and oh boy, is there a difference between them? I'm not enjoying these. I love my chow goos. So, um, here's a lesson to anybody who 
maybe starting out or uh, aren't having the best time with their needles, it's possible that you just don't vibe with your needles. Um, I know that I'm not vibing with these, these ones. I know that I don't vibe with wood needles, but maybe the situation's reversed. Maybe you do vibe with wood needles and you just don't know it. So I would definitely say mess around, try different needles. You may find something that you really enjoy. So I do really enjoy this yarn though. It is, um, it's a two ply yarn and the, the plies themselves are very, like they feel very loose. It feels really nice. Um, and just the, the way that the colors are working up, I think it's so pretty. I really wanted, it's not gonna focus. Y'all, at some point I need to sit down and figure out why I can never get this camera to focus on anything except for my face apparently. This seems to be an ongoing issue for me. But the colors in this are working up really pretty. You can, even though it's fuzzy, you can see that there is some variegation. Which is exactly what I wanted. Um, Colin, who, who is my fiance, I've referred to him a couple times in this episode now. Um, it, he likes navy and gray and kind of more simple colors. And I've knit him one half before in the past. And it is a tin can knits, Cleo Cow, Cleo Kit, Cleo K, Cleo Kit, something, toque. Um, and it's black and silver and green. So I figured let's go with his favorite color this time and go blue. So, and I just wanted something simple that I know that he'll wear to go fishing, to go snowboarding, and that won't be an issue if he gets. It dirty which he babies his Cleo kit the other hat that I've made him because he doesn't want to get it dirty and same with his brother that I've made him a hat for it they don't want to get him dirty I'm just like guys wear them please it's fine if they get dirty they can be washed fairly easily so let's move on now to acquisitions I only have one for this episode but in my next episode there will be many there will be many. I, on Monday, my Sorella Autumn in New York collection arrives. And yesterday I placed a large order for the Knit Picks big sale um, because everything that I wanted was at least 40 to 60% off. Fantastic. And then they also had a thing where if you spent $100, you get 10% off. If you spent $200, you get 15% off. And you spent $300, you get 20% off. And I was really close to that $300 mark for everything that I needed. So I just added a couple more things that I've been thinking about for a while to my cart. So there'll be a large nitpicks order coming. I'm very excited for it. There is yarn in there for my wedding shawl. I'm very excited. I'm so excited to make it. Um, I'll talk about it in my next episode. I'm not going to cast it on yet, but I have one acquisition today. So I have everything that's coming in the next episode, and I'm probably going to stop buying yarn for a little bit. Which, you know, I don't really buy that much yarn anyways. The last time I really bought yarn was in September, and that was for my Autumn in New York pre-order. Pre well, everything's all coming together at the same time. So my one acquisition this week is um, my advent calendar. I didn't order a full advent calendar. I ordered a self-striping daily 24, I think it's 24 or 25 different colored uh, sock skein. And very exciting acquisition actually. We can't, I can't show it to you yet. I ordered from Freckled Whimsy. This little sticker has the gnomes on it. 
So it says, no peeking, do not open until December 1st, 2022, freckledwhimsy.com. And I ordered two 50 gram skeins and they're twisted together. So I, it feels like there's one skein. She was like, don't worry. It's just, it's two, it's just, they're twisted together. And I did that so that I can knit two at a time um, all the way up. And then I figured for heels, toes, cuffs, I will use something that was in stash already. I'm thinking I'm gonna do white sparkle for heels, toes, and cuffs. And then my plan is to knit um, an after, a true afterthought heel and just see what it looks like. And I'm gonna knit these two at a time on nine inch circulars. I need to go pick up another nine inch circular, which won't be that big of a deal. Um, one of my favorite local yarn shops around here, Acorn Street, um, Acorn Street Yarn is doing, I think 20, 15 or 20% off everything for small business Saturday. But the way that they do it is, um, you get, they send you a one-time use coupon for Small Business Saturday, and it's from Small Business Saturday to Christmas Eve, and you can use it any time in there, which I think is brilliant, because it definitely, like, I have things going on next Saturday. My sister's birthday is on Friday, and she's in town, so I'm gonna be busy. I'm working, it's Black Friday weekend, so I can't really do a lot of things, but I have more time in December then to go use that code, to go shop their sale. And I think that that will, I think it incentivizes more people. I ended up going in there last year um, to buy Christmas it, supplies for Christmas gifts because of that, um, because their sale continued further than just, uh, just Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. Whereas maybe I would have gone to a different local yarn shop that was more local to me. But anyways, I digress. I'll go buy a second pair of Chow Goo nine inch circulars to knit that sock. Um, and then I'll have a whole bunch of yarn to show you in the next episode and hopefully a new cast on too. So I'll hope, hopes for next episode is to finish the, I think next episode I'm going to have the advent socks started too. Let me, let me look at a calendar. So hope, okay, while I'm looking at the calendar, hopes for next episode. Be, finish my mittens, be close to finishing my my stocking, have my Cleellum cardigan completely graded and sent to a tester. I have been working on that and it's going slowly, but I'm getting it done. Um, get a good chunk of my muscle burrow done and start these, start my advent socks from Freckled Nimsy and start the socks that I'll be making for my dad for Christmas. And they are going to be made out of this yarn right here. And this is from Yarnaceous. Um, it's on her Salta Fingering, which is her sock base. And I'm not gonna pull my tag all the way out. Actually, I will, because I wanna show you her logo. Because look at it. That's a little brontosaurus. Um, and it's in the color Mommy's Very Angry. And Salta Fingering is 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon. And of course, Mommy's Very Angry is in reference to a quote from Jurassic Park. And these are going to be for my dad. So I'm just going to make some kind of ribbed socks. I don't know if it's going to be a broken rib or a true two by two all the way down. Um, and I'm going to start those next week sometime. Late next week, maybe next weekend. We'll see. And then, so, yeah, I will have started. Just barely. I'll have just barely started these next time. 
then I've told myself that as soon as I finish grading the Cleellum cardigan and have it sent to a tech editor, I can start my next sweater. And that's going to be the Magnolia Bloom. Um, and I want it done before Christmas. <laughs> I have so much to get done. So there's all of that. Um, I have not knit any more on my scrappy wrap design. It's just kind of fallen by the wayside this week. The last two weeks I've been busy. So other than that, yeah, I have uh, 15 minutes until I need to go make this call. And that's all I've got to say. I knew this episode would be short this week, but you know what the short short to me means that it's going to be easier for me to edit and I can just send it out which is great so oh I was supposed to pick a giveaway winner for my magnolia socks um so <laughs> go me I will pop up a picture right here of the winner Thank you so much to everybody who commented on my last episode and um, sent love and support. And um, so if your name is right here, uh, you've won a copy of my Magnolia Socks pattern. I'll have my email link down below. Go ahead and send me an email and tell me your Ravelry name so I can send it to you there. Or if you're not a Ravelry user, um, let me know too and I'd be happy to send you a PDF. So <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that. I'm so tired you guys. Um, there's been a lot going on. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode. I have so many things I'm excited to share with you next time and I hope you stick around. So please give this video a like, um, subscribe, and comment down below tell me what you're working on tell me if you got an advent calendar this year whose did you get um did you get a traditional calendar with all mini skeins or did you get one like me that has the self striping i'm excited to hear about it i'm excited to hear what you guys are up to and um i'll see you in the next episode so bye